This video is sponsored by Surfshark. Hello everybody, welcome to Mike's Mic. My name is Mike. You might be thinking, wow, he's so chipper today. He's so high energy. Absolutely not, absolutely not. I'm actually re-recording this video because Miss Girly, she decided, mm -mm, I'm not gonna work. So I'm re-recording this. And also I have a flight to London in literally 24 hours. Hello sister. Have I started packing? No. So I'm fine. Like I'm so fine. And also like Miss Jessie Nelson right here deciding to leave the group at the most crucial time. And literally like if I turn the lights off, it's still on. Like Zane. I can't do this right now, Zane. The absolute cabello behavior happening behind me right now. No, you're turning off. Today we are absolutely screaming and crying because we've reached the end of the Twilight Saga and we will be discussing the historical artifact known as Breaking Dawn Part 2. I reckon one more semicolon here and I would have lost it. One more, but luckily we only had two, so it's fine. We recently covered Breaking Dawn Part 1, and mm, that was truly a test. I was being tested. I think they should use that movie as some sort of test for mental toughness for astronauts. To summarise what went down in Part 1, Bella and Edward, and I'm going to give them a new ship name, hashtag bed, Bella and Eddie, bed. Bed got married and went to the Isle Esme for their honeymoon, and while there they broke the bed. Yes, it's true, bed broke the bed. And then you know classic shenanigans, Bella got pregnant with an evil vampire baby and nearly D-worded. Now after the colossal flop of part one, part two really had to bring the sleigh to compensate for the floppage of her twin sister. And dare I say it, I think she did. The movie starts and Bella has just been yassified and she's absolutely on one. She's seeing literal dust in the air, she's seeing the condensation, like it's all happening. And I will say, Bella post vampirification and yesification, I understand what she's going through because that's very much me after an ice mocker with oat milk. Like we understand each other, we see each other. Now Miss Bella is thirsty, she's a thirsty girl. So she heads out to hunt with Eddie and we get this running through the forest scene. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, yeah. Why is she running around without shoes on? Put the dogs away. She got the dogs out. <laughs> also, why is she serving school dance? Like, you are actually allowed to get changed. In the forest, Bella's spidey senses start tingling because she can get a little whiff of a man who's been doing some rock climbing and grazed his knee and there's blood everywhere. He's absolutely insane for this. There's nary a rope attached to his body and he's just like climbing that rock face like it's nothing. Okay, sir. The way Bella scaled that mountain, don't even start me. Remember, she's got the dogs out. Sis was absolutely scurrying up that mountain like it was... It's nasty, I don't want to say it. Edward convinces Bella to not k-word this man and instead go snack on a mountain lion and she does so. Like this rock climbing man does not know how good he's just had it. Now back at Casa Cullen, Jacob is being an absolute weirdo. Ooh, that's never happened before, that's so strange. And he says to Bella, take a whiff. Oh no, nah, we gotta go. And Bella's all like, oh my gosh. You really do stink. Now remember at the end of part one, Bella was giving birth to Miss Renez Slay on that operating table inside Casa Cullen. And she actually passed away during the process, which is why she got vampirified. So she hasn't even really seen Miss Renez Slay. So now she goes to meet Renez May for the first time since turning into a vampire. Now what in the fucking Polar Express is happening here? Mm. Mm, absolutely not. Scary ass CGI baby. Like why is Renesmee built like that? And the sick and twisted thing here is that that's not even her most frightening form. When they were making the movie they actually used this like animatronic Renesmee doll and what the fuck is that? No, it's not funny. I got school. I'll tell you one thing, babe. If I was on that set and they brought out Chuck Esme, I would just... I'd be out of there, they'd have to recast. I would like to pose a very serious question to the audience, feel free to answer in the comments below. Who do you think would win in a fight? Scary ass CGI Polar Express Renesme or animatronic demon spawn Chuck Esme? Now seeing these absolute shenanigans on the screen, I'm just like, hmm, I'm once again reminded, I do in fact wish I had a VPN for my eyes. This video is sponsored by Surfshark. Surfshark is a virtual private network available as an app and a browser extension that allows you to browse securely online and also helps you to do other things such as unlock content from all around the world. A couple of weeks ago I was flying from Perth to Melbourne and I had to pay some bills in the airport. Don't even. I personally have a chronic fear of public Wi-Fi networks. So having Surfshark to add another layer of protection is super handy. I just made sure I was connected and got on with my work. Another great feature of Surfshark is that you can easily change your server location to unlock more content. For example, if you wanted to watch Glee alongside my recap videos and it's not available in Netflix in your country, you can use the Surfshark extension to change your location to say Australia and watch it. Also, you can use one account on an unlimited amount of devices, which definitely comes in handy. Use my code MikesMike, M-I-K-E-S-M-I-C, 
Easy to get 83% off plus three extra months for free. Surfshark offers a 30 day money back guarantee so you can give it a go risk free. So make sure you head to the link in the description and use my code Mike's Mike to get that deal. Thanks again to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Now Jacob's being weirdly protective of Renesmee even against her own mother Bella like, oh, that's enough time, put Renesmee down. Bella's just like, what the fuck? You could back up a little bit. Can you fucking imagine? Like you just had this child who's a vampire. You just turned into a vampire. You get to see your child for the first time. This man who can't take no for an answer and won't leave you the fuck alone. He's like, okay, that's enough. Put the baby down. And everyone in the background's like, ooh, yeah, Jacob, tell her what's going on. What's going on? Turns out Mr. Jacob right here, he did a little something something and imprinted on Renaud's mode. You imprinted on my daughter? Now, I think you all know how I feel about imprinting. That's eyelashes, blank stare. Now, Bella is pissed and she's fucking him up. Like she's throwing several an elbow around. And then Jacob says, From the beginning, it was Nessie who wanted me there. Nessie? And then we get this scriptural reading from Bella Lations 1309. You nicknamed my daughter after the Loch Ness Monster? You named my daughter after the Loch Ness Monster? Like, what am I supposed to say? You know, like what is there to say? Now for Bella's birthday, even though she doesn't age anymore, the Cullens give her a literal house. Like, okay, did you just have this ready to go? One thing about the Cullens though, they're gonna have assets. A question for the people, are the Cullens going to adopt Bella now? I mean, the family structural history would suggest so. Anyway, Bella and Edward do the nasty supernatural style and Bella says, you were holding back before. <laughs> Since Bella is now serving Vampire Slay, Zaddy Carlisle tells her that he's gonna have to tell Charlie, Bella's dad, that Bella has D-worded and then they're all gonna have to leave town, AKA leave Cousin Cullen. At this point, Charlie's absolutely going through it, right? His daughter just went on her honeymoon with this weird guy from town and then she's suddenly sick, but he's not allowed to see her. She's seeing all these doctors. So Jacob's like, no, I gotta tell Charles D something. Like I can't let him go down like this. So he goes to visit Charlie and starts stripping in front of him, like taking his clothes off and saying things like, you don't live in the world you think you do. This may seem strange, but strange things happen every day while literally taking his pants off in front of his imprint E's grandfather. Now, why didn't Mr. Charlie just completely walk off? Like, why was he there like, stop? What are you doing, Jacob? This is getting weird. Hmm. So now Charlie knows about werewolves. He doesn't know anything about vampires, but he knows about werewolves. Jacob invites him to Casa Cullen, but doesn't tell him that Bella is now a vampire. So Bella's putting in these contacts to serve human slay. Charlie's just in Casa Cullen, like what the fuck is going on here? Now this man, he didn't deserve any of this. He was just trying to live his life in this small town called Forks. And then all this bullshit starts happening. And then they bring this scary ass CGI baby out and they're like, oh, this is our adopted daughter. And Charlie's just like, oh, okay, yeah. Renesmee, more like, Renesmee. Next thing you know, Bella's kicking a rock. Slay. Next thing you know, Renesmee's aging super fast. She's suddenly five or six and she can fly, question mark. Vampire girlie from part one, Miss Irina. She sees Bella and the Loch Ness Monster hanging out with Werewolf Jacob and she's like, hmm. Let me go dob to Daddy Arrow in Italy. Basically, she thinks that Renesmee is an immortal child. Now, immortal children? These girls are scary. Immortal children are basically children that became vampires while they were children, babe. It's literally in the name, keep up. And because they don't have that full cognition going on, they just go out and slay a whole town. Mm. So the vampire government's like, mm -mm, immortal children, they gotta go. Gotta be hashtag burned and hashtag fire. And the background law is that Arena's mother actually made one of these immortal children. So the mother ended up getting destroyed. And I would show the scene where the Volturi ripped the mother apart because they literally pop her head off and it sounds like pulling the head off a Lego character. Like why is she popping? But I don't think Miss YouTube would appreciate that. But you can have this instead. Now, why did that child weigh literally one gram? The way Queen of the Universe Jane just like lobbed that baby into the fire with absolutely no issue. I'm just like, I don't know if Dakota Fanning has that strength in her arm. Now that they've heard from Arena, there's potentially an immortal child in Forks. They're like, uh-oh. And the Cullens are like, uh-oh, the Volturi are coming. Let's gather some of the girls together to be Katy Perry witnesses to us convincing Arrow that Renesmee is not an immortal child and thus poses no threat. So Bella and Edward get in their hashtag Volvo and hashtag drive to find more vampires. Hello, you're constantly going on about how vampires can run like 600 kilometers per hour and we saw it with our own two eyes, Bella with the dogs out scurrying in the forest. And now suddenly they're just driving long distances. I mean, I guess they have to get that Volvo spawn. Rami Malek appears and he's like the avatar of the vampires because he can control all of the elements. And he really did outsell almost every other vampire in this movie, I will say it. Oh my God, the Amazonian vampires, Zena and Zafrina. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So all up, the Collins have collected 18 vampires to be Katy Perry witnesses in their witness era. Side note, vampire Bella is just constantly snatched and continuously served 
disconcerting. Like, that face card is not declining. It's like an episode of Fork's Got Talent with all these vampires running around showing off their special abilities. And we finally find out what Bella can do. Nothing. She can do nothing and she does it well. Her whole thing is that she can put like a mental force field up, like a shield and stop other vampires from affecting her with their abilities. And she can actually also project it, which is a little bit of a slay. There's also these two Russian vampires and they say, we have been waiting a millennium for the Italian scum to be challenged. <laughs> Excuse me, Lady Gaga and I do not appreciate this slander. Meanwhile, the Volturi are also up to some shit and I just have one question. Why do you act like that? The situation is that Arrows is just looking for a reason to eradicate the Cullens and save one of them, Alice, who he'll then force to join his guard. Why is he doing all this, you might be wondering? Because he loves power, right? And Alice is one of the most powerful girlies he wants her in his rogues gallery. Legs and hips and body, body. So Alice runs off, presumably because she knows that Arrow wants to add her to his rogues gallery. Remember, she has that power where she can see the future, possible futures. And everyone's like, nah, I'm not playing around. I've got school tomorrow, where's Alice? But Bella starts decoding clues that Alice has left for her. And these clues take Bella to meet this man named Jay Jenks. Turns out Jenksty makes fake passports and he's made one for the Loch Ness Monster and one for Jacob, but not one for Bella. And Bella's like, oh shit, this means I'm about to be in the trenches. Now with the Volturi on the horizon, tis the season to be jolly. That's right, it's Christmas time, girls. Bella and Edward are at Casa Charlie and Jacob and the Loch Ness Monster are there as well and they're all doing gift giving. And Bella gives Charlie this five day fishing trip that starts the next day, essentially to get him out of the town when the battle's about to start. We might even talk to Rainbow or some bulls. Woman knows her trout. Woman knows her trout. Woman knows her trout. <laughs> Jacob gives the Loch Ness Monster this nice bracelet, which is like cute or whatever, but I just cannot get over the imprinting. Anytime I see them interact, I'm just like, no. So now it's Pre's before stepping out for this battle and the girls are just having a chat. Edward's on the sidelines like, OMG, all these people are gonna die because of my shenanigans with Bella. And that's honestly the spill of the century because how many lives have this duet put in danger since the start of the saga? And then the Volturi turn up and one thing about the Volturi, they're gonna have an entrance. Legs and hips and buddy, buddy. I love the implication that they all like ran to Forks or whatever and then coordinated themselves in the tree line to walk out at the same time. It's like they literally rehearsed it like James on the side, like, all right, three, two, one, go, go. Go. I'm also screaming at the fact that all of the vampires look extremely pasty except for the hot ones. And I just know for a fact that if I was in that cast, I'd be getting that pasty vampire treatment. Like I'm not getting the beachy glow that Bella and Edward are getting. Jane has returned and thank God. Around about this point in the movie, I was like, I really could do with a main pop girly right now. And then we got our main pop girly. Since putting out the Breaking Dawn part one video, you know, Jane's just continued to dominate the chart. She stays in the top 10 of the Billboard Hot 100 and her debut album has been number one for 600 weeks straight. All the other girls are scared of her for that reason. I'm loving this 15 minute slow walk that the Volturi are doing to get to the Cullinators at the other side of the field. Like they're not wasting a single kilojoule of energy. So they're having a little meet and greet with the Volturi and Arrow wants to meet the immortal child that's not an immortal child and he's just so like, he's slimy. I cannot get over the fact that Bella is slaying so hard in the background. She's not even the focused in these scenes that she's like. So Arrow finally meets the Loch Ness monster and he's like, oh, okay, fine. You're not an immortal child, which means Arena lied and he orders her to be. Side note, there seems to be almost no backlash to the fact that the Cullens brought a werewolf that's like two meters away from the leader of the Volturi. Like I swear back in New Moon, these girls were saying that they were mortal enemies. Shit starts to hit the fan and Jane's like, mm, let me do my thing. Let me give Edward a little bit of pain. Let's make him experience pain. And Belle's on the sidelines like, mm, no. Anyway, um, let me just put up this force field or whatever. Arrow's just spreading flopaganda and he's like, okay, she might not be an immortal child, but this Loch Ness monster right here, we don't know what she's gonna grow up to be, so she must be destroyed. Alice turns up out of nowhere with Jasper next to her like a side dish and she's saying things like, I have evidence that Nessie poses no threat to vampire kind. And from then on, Stacy girls, all it goes down. Alice lets Arrow read her mind so that she can show him this evidence. And because of her reading the future slay, she realizes that Arrow's gonna do his bullshit regardless of what evidence she shows him. So she fucking kicks him in the face into the air and the Volturi take her away. Carlisle runs to save Alice and gets the old slice and dice. Like, oh my God, I was flabbergasted. I was flabbergasted past tense. Arrow's face here, like, sir, why are you smiling like that? The girls are fighting. Next thing you know, Jasper's also getting sliced and diced. And I'm just like, why does this look easy? Like this does not look difficult at all. Like literally the bad guys just go like this. 
this like limp wrist action and it's just over. The head's popping off, flying down the field. Emmett K. Words Jane's brother and I'm not even gonna give him a name because he's so irrelevant. He's just Jane's brother. Nor, see, what is this? Why are the vampires flying like that? Alice chases down Jane and takes her to a werewolf who rips her fucking head off. And it's actually so bad for me as a Jane stan. At the end of the day, I just like supporting good pop music. Is that so bad? I felt like I was in the Hunger Games, you know, when they like, put the fallen tributes on the roof of the dome with the cannon, like doof, it's like doof, Jane, ah. R.I.P. to Jane. You know, she was an absolute evil menace, but she was the people's evil menace. All of Arrow's girls are dropping like flies and he's like, oh shit, let me go X Games mode. And he tries to K-word Bella and Edward, but they WWE tag team and take his head off. The absolute scenes in this field right now, some people would be scared. But wait, this is all just a vision that Alice is showing Arrow when he touches her hand. None of it actually happened. I must say, I'm a little bit disappointed. I love the drama, sorry about it. And also Carlisle and Jasper were starting to flop anyway. So their loss I was kind of like, eh. But at least we didn't lose Jane, right? Couple more weeks on the chart. Alice is like, okay, Arrow, this is your future. So why don't you just let the Locked In's monster live her life in peace? And also I'm bringing out two people. These are two Katie cats from Brazil. I flew them out, all expenses paid. They're in their witness era. And one of them's actually half vampire, half human. And he's totally fine. So what's the issue? Arrow like assesses the situation, meets the Katie cats that were flown out from Brazil. And he's like, mm, oh, okay, oh, okay. You're not an immortal child. So this is fine. Loch Ness Monster is fine. One of his little minions is suddenly like, but sir, they're fraternizing with werewolves and that's punishable offense. And it's like, babe, it's a little bit too late for that. And then they fast walk off the field like this. Like, I'm sorry, where was that energy when arriving on the field? Like I told you they were wasting not a single kilojoule. How do they get this footage of me on a travel at the airport? So at the end of the sleigh, everyone's fine and alive, except for Arena, who de-worded for lying. Then we get this little time jump and this shit. I'm glad she has you. Should I start calling you dad? Nah, nah, what the fuck is that? So you're telling me he's planning on dating Renezme in the future? <coughs> nah, I'm getting heated, I'm getting annoyed. This man, he knew Renezme since day dot. He knew her as a child. He was there when Bella popped the legs open and <coughs> Renezme out on the table while in skeleton mode in Cars of Cullen. I'm being so serious when I say it's getting weird. And then Alice has a vision of Renezme and Jacob together. What the fuck? What the fuck is going on? Like, no. Oh my God. The movie ends with Bella and Edward in the field having extreme close-ups. She takes down the mental shield and shows him what she's been thinking this whole time. Remember, he hasn't been able to read her mind at all. Nobody's ever loved anybody as much as I love you. Oh, okay. And then they're rolling around in the field kissing. Like one thing about Bella and Edward hashtag bed, they're gonna roll around in that field and they're gonna kiss. And then that's it. That's the end of the Twilight Saga. Did they stay in Forks or what? Did they end up telling Charlie all of the bullshit that went down? Why did they let Rami Malek outsell all the other vampires talent wise like that? Like he was really eating them all up. He was literally the avatar. Chuck Esme is evil 100%, no doubt. Like I have literally zero doubt about the evil nature of Miss Chuck Esme. I wish the fight in the field was real, I'm sorry. And my final closing thought on the Twilight Saga is Jane. Mm -hmm. That truly does bring me to the end of this discussion of the Twilight Saga. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. It was a tumultuous experience for me. Feel free to leave me a comment and a like, you know, do your thing. Also, I put out a video a couple of days ago, an art pop video, and dare I say it, I think it might be the best upload I've done this year. So if you haven't checked that out yet, go ahead and do that. I've put a link in the description. Thanks for watching. Thanks again to Surfshark for sponsoring this video and I'll talk to you all soon. Peace out. Bye. I really have to pack my suitcase. I'm in the UK, but just for one day.